welcome to the lecture of sociology entitled phenomenology distinctive features and uh, the major focus shall be on the theory given by alfred schutz phenomenology let's go for the introduction first of all it is a branch of uh, philosophy developed by edmund husserl this is the name which is linked to be the uh, who said to be the first person who actually started the thinkers or the theories on phenomenology it dwelt on the lines of theorizing done by alfred schutz alfred schutz is the major name talked of when we talk about phenomenology he is uh, you can say that not a father of phenomenology but he said to be the concrete name who started who began with the theorizing under phenomenological branches it is in fact a philosophical and sociological alternative to theory of social action the social action theory is focused on understanding the causal factors behind social action of human beings many of us have studied the theories of social action we have studied max weber also we have studied different types of social actions are there and there have been discussions on what are the causes behind social actions now this particular theory is a strong alternative sociological alternative to the theories of social action you can read here the social action theory is focused on understanding the causal factors behind social actions of human beings it also stated that the factors behind social actions make typology of social action phenomenology as a branch of academics and theory rejects the notion that social action can be explained with some set tools now it is not saying that social action is not to be studied it is not saying that social action is not important but yes what the nonology is focusing is that social action is important to be studied in a huge whole in a totality only causal factors are not important only causal factors are not to be understood or only there is not particular set of theories there is not a particular set of tools which interpret social actions so there is a larger scenario social action is one of the most observable human behavior which reflects human emotions and other traits of social living we all know social action reflects what our behavior we think something we feel something and we act we understand something we interpret something and we do a particular social action so it is one manifestation of human behavior and one of the traits of social living interpretation and explanation of social action has been one of the most eye catching era in sociological theory building we have narratives of theories in sociology and other subjects also so there was a time which was focusing all the theories all the thinkers on social action there was a focus on social action and its causes its types its importance like various other factors so there was an era when social action was the main thrust of sociological theories so what happened phenomenology rendered concrete alternative to that phase and the related aspects of social action theory phenomenology did not do or did not undo something with the social action theories did not do something extraordinary but what it did was it actually created different aspects to understand social action not only from causal factor but from other angles also now we'll discuss distinctive features of phenomenology so that we are able to understand what alfred schutz finally said first we'll focus on its major for it i mean phenomenology its major concern and focus is internal working of human mind and the way human beings classify and then make sense of the world around them there are two things to be understood here number one is its major concern and focus is internal working of human mind now it is not the action here it is the internal working behind the action so it will focus more on what is the intrinsic aspect of social action action is happening outside but there is something which is working inside so phenomenology will focus more on the internal working of the human mind and the ways or the way human beings classify and then make sense of the world around them now do whenever we see something in society whenever we see something happening in front of us we classify things we classify in the sense we make classes we we make blocks that this is bad this is good this is emotionally troublesome this is emotionally a happy thing so we classify the things phenomenology will focus on understanding what are those ways we are using to classify and then whatever ways we are using 
how do those ways help us to make the sense of the world around us like it is actually about the sensical aspects of human life next is it does not concern this is next feature of phenomenology it does not concern itself with the causal explanation of human action it does not say that causal explanation is not important but it does not concern itself more with the causal explanation of human action as that of the other social action theories did till this particular point of uh, time when theory of phenomenology came up it focuses on the internalities related to social action which of course includes causal explanations also but also encompasses other aspects of actions like causes meanings purposes impacts goals and ends and the like now there are lot of things which are linked with the aspect of social action if you think rationally so it is not the causes behind the particular social action which are to be understood that's what phenomenology said that we have to interpret or understand or explain the social action in a very wider domain in a very wider scenario next distinctive feature of phenomenology is it concerns itself with understanding and explaining the meaning of things and phenomena rather than knowing how did they come into existence now phenomenology says that we are not only supposed to know what made a particular thing happen what made a particular situation created but it will focus on understanding and explaining the meanings of the things and phenomena now what are the meaning what do we mean by this particular thing is it will focus more on understanding how do people perceive a particular situation how do people react to a particular situation how do people respond to a particular situation to a particular behavior to a particular social action of somebody else now only causal explanation is not said to be enough by phenomenologists they believe that we have to understand that what meaning is being attached to a particular situation a particular thing a particular social action by the members of society and now then we understand that this is about how not about how the th the thing came up to be it is about what meaning is attached to that particular thing so again i'm repeating phenomenology is focusing more on understanding and explaining the meaning of things and phenomena not only on telling what are the causes behind the existence of that phenomena next feature is it is a radical constructionist perspective which seeks knowledge as a social construct now for them for for, for all the phenomenologists for alfred schultz also knowledge is the most important component of study right now in particular in this particular feature we will we'll repeat again they say it is a radical constructionist perspective which seeks knowledge as a social construct knowledge is a social construct what is a social construct which is constructed by those members of society it believes phenomenology believes that knowledge of the meaning given by human being to their social action is itself a social construct and it is not essentially related to one or more set of causes now they say that knowledge of the meaning given by human beings to their social action is a social construct they say what happens is suppose there is some social action happening suppose there is some situation being created now whatever knowledge the people have they will use that to give meaning to a particular instance to a particular situation now a person who is literate enough he will see a particular thing differently a person who is illiterate he or she might see a particular thing differently maybe better even than the previous person but that will be a different perspective a person who is retarded who has no mental senses he or she will take entirely a different perspective of the happening a person who is ignorant who is literate enough who has degrees but who is ignorant he or she might totally react differently so now whatever knowledge a person has in his life span or whatever knowledge a person already possesses that will help the person or the or, or the members of social order to give meaning to the social reality or now what what again it comes up to be is that particular set of i written in the last in this last line of this particular point that th th there is not one particular set of causes which will create the happening there is a huge totality there is a whole some understanding of the thing which is to be undertaken and the knowledge which a person or which group of people 
they possess that will help us to give meaning to a particular happening or situation. Next distinctive feature is it focuses phenomenology. It focuses on importance of senses of human beings and states that individuals come into contact with the outer world through their senses, like abilities to touch, to smell, to hear, to see and the like. Very important aspect to be understood. Perhaps one of the most, or you can say one of the most cardinal features of phenomenology. They say that human senses are the most important connectivity between any situation, any happening, anything, and the human mind or the members of society themselves. Now, had not senses been there, there would have been no relation between us and the social order. The relationship between us and the social order has come up with the help of senses. These senses play an instrumental role to connect us with the outer world. We use our senses of hearing, of listening, of seeing. See, there is, a, there is something happening far off. We can't listen, but we can see. So seeing a particular happening will give an idea to our mind, will develop a particular knowledge in our mind. With the help of that knowledge, we will give meaning to that happening, what we are watching. So we can relate the previous uh, point also, the, the, the thing about knowledge. So with the help of senses, what I hear, what I hear, something is, you know, murmuring, somebody is murmuring, and I feel this is something about me. This is something about us. Now that means the sense of hearing is connecting me to a particular happening and the knowledge I'm getting through the use of that sense is making me give meaning to that particular happening. This is what phenomenology is saying. Next uh, phenomenological distinctive feature is the very link between human beings and the outer world is an essential component to be studied. Social action theory, we just mentioned that they say that only causal effect is not enough. Now they again explain this through this particular point that the link between human beings and their outer world is an essential component to be focused. We have to understand what are the means with which we are relating ourselves with the outer world. What are the ways we are using to understand the outer world? What are the ways which are making us realize that there is an outer world? Finally, what is it? They are the senses we are using to connect ourselves with the outer world. With the senses only, human beings give meaning to the social world around them, which is the main thrust of phenomenology. We discussed, and I'll repeat, that it is with the help of senses that we are able to connect ourselves with the outer world and we are able to give meaning to the things around us. And that is what phenomenology wants to focus on. Now, uh, we'll focus a bit on Alfred Schutz on phenomenology. He is the major name when we talk of phenomenology. We cannot avoid talking about him because he is the sound of phenomenology, he's the voice of phenomenology. Let us read what he says. His work on phenomenology is known as the phenomenology of the social world. A very, very uh, beautiful phrase expresses almost whatever he wants to say about it. The phenomenology of the social world. Like, how do we see the social world? He is the first one in the records of theory building who emphasizes on how phenomenology can be used to develop insights to the social world. He says that if phenomenology as a branch of sociology is being created, there is a task for it. There is an aim for it. And the aim is that we have to understand, I've written that emphasize on how phenomenology can be used to develop insight to social world. Like how can we understand the insight of the members of society to the social world? What is there in the mind of people? What is there in the mind of members of society that makes them understand, that makes them interpret, that makes them explain the social world around them? For him, the social world is a construct to see which there is a need of an insight which human beings dwell in the course of things being followed by them. Now he says that it is the social world is a construct. It is not something which is there and you see and you go and like we have Taj Mahal. You, you, you uh, type a destination on Google, it will guide you there is Taj Mahal. You type a destination on Google, you will, it will let there's the Flana Hotel, there's a Flana restaurant. But he says, uh, when you talk of social world, it is not a destination. It is not a concrete aspect where you can go and reach. It is something which is a construct, which is made by the people themselves, which is the outcome of the people's sensical observation, which is the outcome of how people have an insight towards the thing around them. So social world for him is a construct. And there is a need of an insight 
through which we can see that how are we following the social construct of social world alfred schut says that there are ways which human beings use to classify and attach meaning to the outer world now this is the main thrust this is the main point where schut's theory stands on he says that phenomenology according to him is meant to or is doing the task of understanding all the ways which human beings or the members of society we may say are using to classify the things around them and attach meaning to the outer world i told you in the beginning and i think in the middle of the lecture that there is a system of classification of things like we classify something as our favorite i don't like it i like it this is something i feel very happy with i feel very hurt with now we are classifying the things now who is helping us to classify it is not individual factor there are some factors which are affecting my mind to classify the things my own experiences and experiences are not again individual they are in connection to the other people of society so first is that what ways people use to classify the things around them is the first thrust of phenomenology and next is what ways are used to attach meaning to the outer world like we are attaching i mean right now corona lockdowns are there um, people are taking it differently quarantine is there for everyone whole world is on one point everybody let it be rich poor whatever we are facing a common emotional and social situation that is a lockdown now we are attaching our own meanings to it in some families they are enjoying quarantine in some families they are crying because they are not able to go and have their daily which is their eat food in some families there is a continuous fight of frustration you know we have dip, so we are attaching our own meanings to the social world around us but phenomenology will understand what are those ways which we are using to see one particular thing entirely differently we have our own perspective so therefore phenomenology is focusing on understanding the ways of one how do we classify the things around us and number two how do we or what ways do we use to give meaning to the world around us now all this does not happen the 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 ppt itself says in the next line all this does not happen in an individual place this is a social process whatever i am thinking about a particular thing maybe it is a lockdown maybe it is something uh, something uh, let's you can say example animals on the roads not having food you know you have different questions in your mind so whatever we are thinking about this particular lockdown which is a common phenomena for all of us it is a common situation for all of us we are thinking it separately but it is not an individual domain it is affected by the social processes there is a full fledged influence of social things on my mind on your mind while interpreting one common thing which we all are facing or which we all are visualizing somebody something like a political intervention of the state is one thing which is influencing my mind whether i am able to get essentials of life is second thing which is influencing my mind what is the behavior of my neighbors with me it is third thing which may influence my mind uh, which which further makes me give a meaning to this lockdown so there are multiple ways you people are there others are there somebody is young somebody is old for an old person sitting at home is not a new thing for a young person sitting at home is entirely a very tough thing for a person like me who is a mother who is a teacher we like a person like me who is a another gender who is a father who is a teacher who is a who is working somewhere else for him or for her everybody will have a different meaning for the lockdown but that is of course an individual perspective but it is not existing in an individual domain it is totally influenced with social factors so what phenomenology and what particularly alfred schut says is that the ways which we use to classify things and to give meaning to those things are although given individually but they are not existing in individual spaces they exist in a social space they have a social Uh, reference next is he talked of the process of typification typification is actually what is we say classifying the things for example he uses the examples like football match bank manager he uses he gives a lot of examples you can read the books and you can come out with the example he says that typification is a process which consists of the concepts attached to the classes of things by human beings first is we classify the things 
we make blocks this is this this is good this is bad this is game this is uh, profession this is household and then what we do we after classifying we attach meanings to those classes this is the process of typification he says alfred shoot says these typifications are not specific to one member but are socially shared by members of society again he repeats that let it be classification of the things let it be a process of giving meanings to a thing let it be giving interpretation to a particular situation let it be typification let it be giving meaning to the classified domains of life by all means these are socially shared ways and methods of the members of society they don't exist in individuality then shoot says the typification is transfer to children it is a, it is something which is transfer to the coming generation is to other people to children with the help of what with the help of language written text reading books imagine when a small child is there you are trying to tell him a story you, know? you tell him that there was a jungle it was full of darkness he starts imagining that he starts imagining now what what the reading what the reading book or the text is doing the text is helping the person to create something in his mind the the thing that we talked about uh, in just previous a few minutes is what imagining that is creating the social construct child is constructing something in the mind what is what is helping him to construct this text so alfred shoot says language is perhaps one of the strongest part of phenomenology because it helps typification process to be transferred to other people with the help of reading books by the help of written text and language people interact the next point is alfred shoot focuses is people interact communicate with each other through typification through the ways they see things differently those meanings are then shared and interpreted he says that we communicate to each other we talk we communicate with the interactionism that is interaction by interaction is of two types we all we all would have learnt or would have read, read somewhere one is when we use language other is when we don't use language but we use symbol and gestures symbolic interactionism now phenomenology is one of the branches of symbolic interactionism shoots focuses and explains a very fine part of it he says that people interact people communicate with each other through typification through the ways they see things differently now those meanings are then shared and interpreted this is the focus of shoots this sharing finally results into creating of stock of knowledge this is a very particular focus very particular thrust sent by shoots he says that we have to understand a stock of knowledge is created when we interact when we share our meanings when we use different ways to communicate or you know pass to other people what we feel how do we classify what meaning do we give to a particular situation what happens is a stock of knowledge is created which he calls this common sense knowledge common sense knowledge means there will be a stock of knowledge which will not be particular to one particular person or society it will be almost the things are common to all so, so this is common sense knowledge this common sense is necessary to accomplish essential and practical tasks needed to be done for example posting a letter he says that Uh, this common sense knowledge this talk of knowledge is very important instrument to accomplish our means for example we have to send a message we have to post a letter shoot says he takes example of posting a letter one person is writing a letter now writing letter means there is some message or there are some messages in that particular text second person is or maybe he himself is packaging it and then going to a place where the post will be done now second thing is postal office postal office will do stamping or ticketing or whatever then they will be sending the box to the person who will deliver it to that particular city now the the, the uh, railway works comes the bus or roadways or airways or whatever it comes out and they deliver the letter to a particular place where it is just time to go then again post office then postman he will deliver the letter to a particular person then the person who will receive the letter who will read the letter and who will understand what the message was there what message was intended to be sent by the writer of the letter now shoot very beautifully explains this phenomena here that the common sense is prevailing here the common stock of knowledge is prevailing here it is performing the task of accomplishing our goals 
automatically all the people know that the message sent by one person has to reach the message sent to another person like it has to reach the person for whom the message is meant to be now the common sense knowledge may is making them accomplish the goals we all have by the uh, by the means of sharing common ways of giving meaning and classification of things we all have learned that some things are common to us i give you a symbol please call him you will try to locate that which person i wanted to call you will help me so this is with the help of communication we are using stock of knowledge common sense knowledge to accomplish our goals so what uh, phenomenology or what elf shoots particularly says is that phenomenology has resulted into creating or understanding the creation of the stock of knowledge which is the final result of sharing of the common ways you know to classify and to give meaning to various things and situations around us this common sense knowledge enables humans to understand each other and the meaning given by them to the social action of or, or other things of the world now so common sense knowledge is giving us a space to understand others and giving others an ability to understand us because something is common between us now this common sense knowledge is first it is helping us to accomplish our goals then number 2 it is helping us to understand each other and then it makes people convinced that there is a form of social order and reality in existence now very important thing here to understand is the term social order the thing named social order actually does not exist there is not something which i say i pick up and say here is social order social order is believed to be existing and how do we start believing in it with the help of common sense knowledge we have a stock of knowledge which has made us understand that social order exists around us and there is a reality around us so shoot says that finally right from using the ways to classify things using the ways to classify and then give meaning to the things using the ways to communicate to each other and creating a common sense knowledge or stock of knowledge we are trying to understand each other and then finally we are making ourselves convinced that yes a social order exists and yes the reality exists then uh, talked a lot about some knowledge and shoots I, i have to make some concluding remarks which are i think very important for us to revise and understand once again conclusion first is studies undertaken by phenomenology extend the scope of studies of human action nowhere they undid whatever social action theory says phenomenology is an extension of the studies of social action i firmly believe and we will also understand and accept that they have extended phenomenology has extended the scope of human action theories these attempts go beyond understanding that only causes of human actions are crucial to be studied rather emphasis on totalitarian aspects of social understanding now what knowledge does is how has it extended the scope of social action or human action theories it has said that don't only focus on understanding the causes of an action we have to focus on other aspects also like what can be the impact of the action what does the action mean what does the action intend to do what will the action perhaps uh, be doing after some time what will the action perhaps be influencing the person so we have to understand social action in totalitarian aspect not only through the causal explanation of a particular thing next the utmost instrument in hands of members of society are their senses which enable them to see the social reality and also make the order appear in the social world they live in another very crucial point to repeat and to understand is that senses what we own are the most important part of any understanding of any social component and of course phenomenology also so senses make us understand make us classify make us give meaning to a particular thing and then senses are the instrument with which we convince ourselves with which we see that there is a social reality and there is a social order i hope that this lecture has been uh, adequate enough to make phenomenological features understand and uh, to understand what alfred shoot says there are some references i have mentioned some books now there are many books talking about phenomenology and the alfred shoot theory but these four books are perhaps the most popular books and the most concrete you know sources of understanding phenomenological understanding francis abraham bottomore her lumbus her lumbus a previous edition is there 
her numbers duration is there latest one printed in 2018 and uh, i think 19 one would also be coming on the way you can use these books and best of luck god bless you all for any queries for anything you can contact on my email id god bless all have a good and healthy life thank you so much